everyone, you're very welcome. Morning. Particularly welcome to Gemma. Uh, I buried Gemma's brother on Monday. And it was a, a, a beautiful service to see so many people in such a bad day come to honour him and to pay their respects. And I just want you to know that we're continuing to pray for you, as we are for Cathy as well and the loss of her daughter. That, you know, we don't forget people because grief doesn't just disappear overnight. And you need to be remembering particularly brothers and sisters in Christ who are going through that trauma at this time. Let's just pray for God's word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask this morning that you would speak to us through your living and active word. We've said, Lord, in that song, speak, O Lord. We want to hear your voice. We want to know, Lord God, what it is that you're saying to us. Some of us might be offended by what you say, Lord God, but help us, please, to receive it. Because whatever you speak, Father, you speak in love. Let it not be my words, but your words, Lord God, that change people's lives. Lord, we love you. We love your word. We thank you for the simplicity of this, because no matter how complicated, Lord, the Bible might be, no matter, we, no matter how hard we struggle to get our minds around so much that's contained with that, it's summed up so simply in these words. Jesus loves me. This sign, for the Bible tells me so. Speak, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, last week we looked at the absurdity of existence. And that is the struggle between the human tendency, it's in all of us, to look for meaning in life. Or what Albert Camus, the French philosopher, described as the silent answer of the universe. That there actually is no inherent meaning in life. Imagine if you lived to be a hundred years, years old to find out that life actually has no meaning. Meaning of life versus no meaning of life. That is the absurdity of existence. Not only though does it suggest that life has no meaning or purpose, but it actually warns some people will commit what is called, turn it down a bit Mark please, philosophical suicide by deluding themselves into believing that life actually has meaning. So there are people who, even though they know that life has no meaning, they will delude themselves into believing that life has meaning just to be able to cope with the hardest truth that life is meaningless. And Camus, the philosopher, says, those poor Christians. <laughs> those poor Christians, they are the worst in the world for doing this. They delude themselves into believing that life is meaning. There are also those who actually rebel against the absurdity of existence, believing the only way to cope is to resist it and just to get on with it and enjoy life. And these people are called absurd heroes. But Christians are absurd heroes with a difference. They know that God created them for a reason. They know that God created them with a purpose. They resist the lie that life has no meaning or purpose because they know otherwise. As Rita would often say, you know in your knower. You know in your knower because they know, Christians know, that God created them, that he loves them, and that he has a plan for their lives. Christians are the real absurd heroes who know the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. They know Jesus who is the Lord of life. And I'm going to read three verses, so well, a few verses, but from three different passages this morning. You don't have to look them up. I promise you, you're there, they're there. Feel free to look them up. First one's in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. And I need you to listen to what is being said this morning here in this. It's interesting. Malachi chapter 3, it's the last book of the Old Testament. Verse 6. First part of it says this. For I am the Lord... I do not change. Okay? For I am the Lord. The word here for Lord is Jehovah. The self-existent, all-powerful one. He doesn't need anything. doesn't need anybody. He is self-existent. 
He is the all-powerful one, and he is saying, For I am the Lord. I do not change. The writer to the Hebrews, 400 and whatever number of years later, 400 to 30 years later maybe, the writer to the Hebrews in chapter 13, verse 8, says these words. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen to it again. In Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, for I am the Lord, I do not change. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, the writer says of Jesus, and we know that Jesus is God become a man. Jesus is God in the flesh. And he writes, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now listen to what Jesus says in John chapter 10. I'm going to read a couple of verses here. Jesus says these words, John 10 verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. It's not, I will give them somewhere up ahead. He says, I'm giving them right now, those who are my sheep, those who follow me, I give you right now, at that moment, eternal life. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Hallelujah. See when you're struggling with it, oh God's angry with me. I don't think I'm seeing all of this crap that the enemy puts into your head to try to undermine your faith in God. When all of that is coming against you, when all of hell endeavors to shake your faith, Jesus says, and they shall never perish. And then he comes in again. My father who has given them to me. Do you remember last week we were saying that God's thoughts towards his people are always precious. Jesus says, my father who has given these sheep who follow me, whom I have given eternal life, my father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. How secure, Christian, do you feel this morning in the Lord? Isn't it wonderful? The love of God, the salvation plan of God is all encompassing. And you know what? As I said, there is no one left out last week. It is open to whosoever believes. For I am the Lord, I do not change. Someone down the road, he's not going to change his mind about you, Christian. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My sheep hear my voice. I was chatting with Mark, Mark Preston and Rocky Davison on Wednesday afternoon. In fact, I said to Rocky, would you stop flipping sending me stupid videos on Messenger? I said, do my flipping head in with the nonsense that you're sending me. I said, hey, I'm hey, going we're to good him. Listen, good what do you hear? What do you hear? What do you hear? I told you we're in for it this morning. Oh, here we go. He shows me this stuff, and honestly, it bores me to death. It's full of sentimental rubbish. It is Christian shame. You know what it is? Christian shame. If you really believe in God, forward this to 20 people. <laughs> you know, so therefore I must be on saved satanic worshiper. Satan worshiper. It's full of sentimental rubbish, Christian chain mail and superstitious claptrap. And I said to Rocky, stop flipping, sending me that nonsense. And then Rocky rightly protested. But some of them are good. But some of them are good. And humble pie, I suppose you're right. Some of them are good. Perhaps the occasional one is worth looking at. It's worth reading or it's worth listening to. Other people send me nice inscriptions, words of encouragement. A friend Geraldine sent me a beautiful one that says, don't focus on how stressed you are, 
but focus on how blessed you are. That's a beautiful thought, isn't it? Don't focus on how stressed you are. Focus on how blessed you are. Or in other words, you are here to make someone else's life better. You are here to make someone else's life better. So, so Rocky's right. The occasional one that comes in, and I get one from Agnes, I get one from all over the show. Agnes, you know, you've really made me self conscious here today. I'm scared to move. This is the lady who gave the donation to fix the creaky floor. I'm scared to move. She said, I spent the money on the carrier. Sorry for making me a fast place. She said, sit with the back here with her friend on the plane. It's out there now into the, into the ether. It's out there now into the ether. But these things that we get, these, these messages that we get, we get them, I get them from everybody. The lovely pictures that will have beautiful words of encouragement or whatever else. I get so many emails, so many messenger or WhatsApp messages, Facebook tags and text messages that to be honest with you, I don't really pay a lot of heed to most of them. I just go, delete, delete, delete. I certainly don't, as I said, I don't forward on any that ask me forward this on. I'm not in the Christian chain, you know. I don't like that stuff. Yeah. However, over the last week, I got the same video from numerous people. And as soon as I read the intro, this will have you in tears. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as I read, this will have you in tears. Delete, 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 delete. Every time it came in, delete, delete, delete. I deleted it without watching it. And honestly, I got it from numerous people sending it at different times. Well, later on Wednesday evening, I received a call from a number that I didn't recognize. And I've spoken to the person about this, and I'm not going to actually name them, but I received a call from a mobile number that I, I didn't recognize. And I was just finishing a meeting. In fact, I, I had finished the meeting so alive, right? I was just finishing a meeting, but I was knackered, and I really couldn't be bothered to take in another call at that time of night. And that's the truth. I just couldn't be bothered. I was tired out, and I didn't want to talk to anyone. Uh, so I text, I text the person, I text the person, and I said, "Sorry, I can't talk right now. I have, I have actually as a tablet on my phone. Just push. Sorry, I can't talk right now." And immediately they came back, apologising for disturbing me. And I thought that's strange. And they said, "I'm really sorry for disturbing you." I then asked curiously. I then asked. Who are you? <laughs> You're always scared to answer a phone number that you don't recognize because yeah, you, yeah. you get all the woes, me's coming on and everything. And so, so I said, who are you and what do you want? And they came back and said, I'm really sorry for disturbing you. I just needed some food. Oh. I just needed some food. So I text back, do you think I'm a fucking super <laughs> I did not. I did not. That was a joke. That was a joke. I forwarded them a contact number that could help them to get a food parcel. And they immediately came back and they said, thank you so much for your kindness. Well, as I relaxed and thought about having some supper and whatever else, a sweet thought entered my head. Ask that person <coughs> where they live. And I'll be honest with you, because I knew I was going to get some grub before, supper, before going to bed. I thought, ask them where they live, and if they're nearby, I'll throw something together, and I'll take it to them. So when I text them, I said, where do you live? And he turned out and says, Banger. And I went, right, well, where about? He says, Gwyneth, or some white sheep. And I went, what? He says, Banger in wheels. And he went, oh, he says, I thought Shiloh was Bangor in my town. He says, I didn't realize that I'm really sorry. And so when I asked no, 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 we are in Northern Ireland, um, they once again were so, so apologetic. And then while I was actually preparing a snack, 
I thought, I dirt my head. Do you know what? That person's hungry. Here I am making a cheese and pickled onion sandwich, and that person's hungry. And so we continued to text, and we came up with a way to make sure that he had food that night before he went to bed. Now, right. in light of that, get back to Rocky's horrible video. Back to this video, Rocky sent it, Val Gummigan sent it, Rodney Bishop sent it, Ken Weir sent it, numerous other people sent this video to me. And on Thursday morning, lo and behold, when I opened up Messenger, there was that flaming thing there again. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to watch this. Tears in their eyes. It was all about this guy who questioned, does God still speak to people? today? Does God still speak to people today? And so he prayed a simple prayer. God, if you still speak, then tell me what you want me to do, and I'll try my best to do it. What a prayer. Humble, sincere. God, if you still speak, maybe you know there are people who aren't sure whether God exists. Maybe there are people who question all the time because he hasn't intervened in certain situations in life that he's not interested in you. This man could pray a very humble prayer. And I'm asking you to think about this. He prayed, God, if you still speak, then tell me what you want me to do. And I'll try my best to do it. Well, as the guy was driving home, just driving, heading towards his house, it was impressed upon his mind to buy a gallon of milk. <sighs> I don't need milk, all these arguments going under his head and everything. And then he thought to himself, hold on here. What if this is God? So eventually, he did so. He, he bought the milk, and as he got back into the car and was driving home, he then believed that he heard a voice say to him to drive down a particular street. And then he drove down the street. As he drove down, he heard a voice say, stop here. And where he stopped, he looked across and there were a number of houses on this street. And then he thought, got this thought come into his head. He said, go to that house there. Wrap the door and give the milk to whoever answers. Well, it was quite late at night. He was afraid because he didn't know. I don't know if you've ever done door-to-door -door evangelism to go around talking to people about Jesus. And you're at the door, you're always sort of in fear and trepidation of who's going to open it and what the response is going to be. So this guy was late at night going to somebody's house. He hadn't got a ball in whose house it was, but he went, he wrapped the door. He was afraid. He even says, well, oh, oh, if this is you, God, like, you know, what if this isn't of you? I know I look like a red Egypt. Standing here at somebody's door with a gallon of milk. Well, the door opened, and a man came, standing just in a t-shirt and jeans, and the milkman will call him, just handed him the gallon of milk, and said, I was told to give you this. It turned out that the man and his wife, they had run out of money, and they couldn't afford milk for their baby. Amen. And they had prayed and asked Amen. the Lord Amen. for help. Well, the milkman not only gave him the milk, but he gave whatever money he had in his wallet, he gave it to the couple. And he went to his car with tears in his eyes. Does God still speak? Yes. 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 Does he understand yes. all our needs? Was God prompting me? Speaking to me about a man in wheels being hungry. I watch adverts all the time. I'm sure you see them. I watch adverts all the time of starving kids in Africa in various countries and others having to walk miles for filthy water. And I'm not prompted or emotionally blackmailed to do anything about it, to give to these charities. I'm not saying we shouldn't give to charities. I do give to charities and I sponsor children. But I'm just saying that these things come on our TVs all the time. I never feel prompted by any of these. 
And yet, in this case, with this man from Wales, I just couldn't get him out of my head. Did God see his need and use a simple mix-up of Bangor, Northern Ireland and Bangor, Wales to get him yep. through? Look, there could be a lot of questions without answers on this subject. As I said, I get quite a few requests for help on a weekly basis, and I often just refer them to whatever relevant organizations, such as Storehouse North Down or, or other agencies that are helping people in need at this time. And yes, of course, I am very, very conscious that there are a lot of chancers and rip-off artists out there just looking for a free handout. But this one seemed different. Like the man in the milk, I just couldn't let it go. The question this morning is, does God still speak to people in 2020? Well, I believe, and some of you have already said, but I believe the answer is a resounding yes. Yeah. And how can I be sure? Because the Bible tells me so. so. Yeah. Listen to what it says. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord. I do not change. The God of the Old Testament. Some people think the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament are two different gods. They are not. They are still the same loving, faithful, merciful, forgiving, gracious God. And he says, for I am the Lord, I do not change. He who spoke to Adam and Eve in the garden, in the cool of the, in the, cool of the evening, in the garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve were there, God walked with them in the cool of the evening. And he chatted with them, he had conversations with them. He who spoke to Noah and said to Noah, I am pierced to the very heart by the wickedness of the people of this earth and I am going to destroy the whole earth by flood. Therefore, I want you to build an ark and I'm going to bring you and your family in and I'm going to bring all of these animals in and I'm going to wipe out everything else. But God who spoke to Noah. God who spoke to Abraham and said to Abraham, I want you to leave your company and I want to take you to somewhere else and never mind where it's going to be, just trust me. And Abraham did so. God who spoke to Isaac, God who spoke to Jacob, God who spoke to Moses and led him back to Egypt so that he could deliver the people of Israel out of bondage in Egypt into the promised land. God who could speak to Samuel when he called him Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel was thinking it was Eli, the high priest, and says, what do you want? And Eli says, it wasn't me. Three times he heard the voice of God speak, Samuel, Samuel. And the next time he goes to Eli, and Eli says, listen, see the next time you hear that voice say, speak, Lord, for your, your servant hears. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. The God who spoke to King David of Israel. The God who spoke to Daniel and preserved him in the lion's den. The God who spoke to all of the prophets of the Old Testament and many others. The God who spoke to Malachi and got Malachi to write down, I am the Lord, I do not change. This is the same God. He is the Lord who does not change. Jesus as God. Jesus, God as a man, came to this world and went about speaking to people, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all who were sick. Jesus chose his disciples, taught them and sent them into the world with his word. From Matthew to Revelation, Jesus speaks. Jesus speaks. Jesus speaks. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Christian, listen, listen. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Jesus is still speaking. In 2020, Jesus is still speaking. He is saying to his sheep many, many things. Maybe you are one of the sheep of Jesus and today he's saying to you, I have a plan for you. I have a wonderful thing that I want you to do. And you're afraid of what it is that he's saying to you. I'm too afraid to step out. What if it's not Jesus? You know what? I would rather take the risk 
and find out and fall flat on the face because I know that he will uphold me in his everlasting arms. And I'd rather take that step of faith and trust Jesus. Maybe he's saying to you today as a Christian, you know, you've strayed away from the path. You've gone like one of those sheep who has gone astray. But you know what? I'm calling you back, Jesus, and saying, come back to me. Come back to me. Come back to me. All of my thoughts towards you have always been precious. Come back to me. Jesus is speaking in 2020. My sheep hear my voice. Listen, we can, we can dry out the voice of Jesus. So many ways. We can drown it. We don't want to hear it. We're scared to hear it. We, have, we believe the lies of Satan that he doesn't love us anymore, that he's angry with us, or that we haven't been pleasing to him. We don't want to hear that voice repent because there's things we don't want to let go of in our lives. There's things that we think, oh, if I repent, if I, if I say, Jesus, I'll yield it all to you, maybe he'll take it all away from me. I'm scared of losing it. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus' thoughts towards you are always precious. And he promises all things, not some things, all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose, to those who walk in his ways. If you are like the sheep that hasn't been hearing the voice of God or the sheep that has been hearing the voice of Jesus, way back here someone is speaking to you, calling you back, and you're trying to run away ahead, they're trying to run on. Jesus is going to run after you. In fact, he's going to run before you. He's going to be wherever you go because he loves you and he will not let you go and nothing can snatch you out of his yeah. Through the Bible, Jesus Amen. is saying, I'm not Rocky. I'm not Rocky. Some mornings as I'm going past, and I can see him sitting up at his window with his Bible on his knees, pretending to read it. He's actually picking horses in the sun. I know, Rocky, that you're reading about, but blesses me to watch and to see. It's so beautiful because Jesus is speaking through the living word. You're going to think I'm a, a mental and that the people in the white coat should come and take me away here. But no sooner this morning that I had prayed about this talk and brought this talk and just submitted it before the Lord when he told me as clear as day what he wants me to speak on next week. And I just thought, what? I said, that must be people going to die. That's my, my immediate thought is when God shows me something on a Sunday to prepare for the next Sunday, I think all my week's going to be a nightmare. Because he's told me well in advance. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think, I'm going to be inundated with funerals and everything else. But he, I believe he spoke to me this morning. Jesus is speaking still. He speaks through the written word of God. He speaks through the preached word of God. I don't know what I'm saying this morning. Jesus has spoken to you. He speaks by the power of his Holy Spirit. Maybe this morning, maybe you're not in this hall and you're watching Facebook or YouTube and you're wondering, you know, what is he speaking to me? There's a wee voice at the moment saying to you, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to yield your life to God. You need to come back to God. You need to sort yourself out. Is, it, is there a voice telling you that Jesus is coming back soon? Then you need to listen. You need to listen to the voice of Jesus. We can drown it out, we can block it out, but that voice is speaking. And if you take the time to just yield before the Lord and say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears, he will speak. But when you act on what he says, through the written word, Jesus speaks. Through the preached word, Jesus speaks. By the power of his Holy Spirit, Jesus speaks. Through creation, Jesus speaks. In dreams, in visions, by angelic visitations, Jesus speaks. Through signs and through wonders, and by many other means, God is speaking to you today. God is speaking because he is the Lord who changes not. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and my sheep hear my voice. Christians often tell of how Jesus calls them to ministries and to services for his glory. Or they talk of how God spoke to them about a particular issue in their lives. But it's real. I've said this many, many times for the unbeliever. It seems to be that when we, we talk to God, 
It's called prayer. But when we say God talks to us, it's called schizophrenia. But God is speaking to his people. My sheep hear my voice. So the question, question sorry, needing us is not, does God speak to people today? Rather, the question should be, are we listening to the voice of God? Are we listening for his voice? Christian, remember, it is God who has declared, I am the Lord. I do not change. That means he's still speaking. From the Garden of Eden to Revelation, he's still speaking. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still speaking. My sheep, Jesus said, hear my voice. <coughs> Therefore, if God is speaking to us today, which I believe he is, what is he saying? What is he asking of us? What is he asking of you today? I'm not suggesting that the situation with the man in Bangor Wheels was the still small voice of God prompting me. I'm not saying 100% it was, but neither am I ruling it out. Unlike the guy in the messenger video, I don't need to ask God if you still speak. I know God speaks today because the Bible tells me so. However, I too will cautiously pray, Lord, Lord God, tell me what you want me to do and I'll try my best with the power of your Holy Spirit to do it. Christian, will you pray that prayer? Will you pray that prayer asking God what he wants you to do and tell him that with his help he'll try to do what he asks but listen be careful what you ask for yeah. be careful yeah. Yeah. what you ask for God has a plan he has a purpose for your life he is speaking to you today when you get the opportunity Go into a wee quiet place and like the man with the milk, just simply pray and say, Lord, tell me what you want me to do. And with your help, I'll try my best to do it. I wonder what Christian this morning will accept that challenge. And I hope and pray that when you do, you act in accordance with the word of God. Maybe this morning there's someone here or someone watching on Facebook or on YouTube and you're not yet a Christian, you're not yet a follower of the Lord Jesus. Well, let me tell you something. You might find this hard to believe, but God is speaking to you right now. God is speaking to you this morning. And I believe that if you, with all sincerity, ask him to speak clearly to you, and if you promise, promise him to do what he asks, his word, his first and foremost word to you will be, repent. If you're not saved, his first words to you will be, repent. Turn around from living your life your way. Turn back to God, because his way is the very best way. His way is the plan for your life. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what God would speak to the unbeliever this morning. And remember, he loves you with an everlasting love. His arms are wide open to receive you. And he's saying to you, in love, repent. And put your trust in my son Jesus so that you might be saved. I wonder this morning on Facebook, YouTube, watchers, Maybe anybody here in the hall who's not saved. Are you prepared to pray, Lord God, 
Tell me what you want me to do. And with your help, I'll try my best to do it. Do you know that it is a command of God to repent? He's not asking me nicely. He is commanding people to repent. It's such a command because he knows what the end result will be if a person does not repent. The end result is you will be cut off from the life of God for all eternity. You will be separated from anything good for all eternity. You will be cast into a place of outer darkness, a lake of fire. It's called hell. But God in his love is reaching out to you. In his love he is speaking to you. And he's saying to you this morning, repent, turn around and live your life for me. Trust in my son Jesus who died for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning, those of us who know you and love you. We want to thank you for the truth that in 2020, God still speaks. Jesus is still speaking. My sheep hear my voice. How can we be so sure, Father? How can we be so sure, Jesus? How can we be so sure, Holy Spirit, that you, Almighty God, would speak to people such as us? Well, we can be sure because the Bible says so. And we believe your word. Lord, I pray this morning that those of us who know you and love you could still, Lord God, go into that secret place in our hearts, in our homes, wherever, and pray, Lord, what is it that you're saying to me? What do you want me to do? And with your help, oh God, I promise you, I'll try to do it. I pray, Lord God, for anyone who's not a Christian, that they would understand something of your love, that you are calling them. Lord, from the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned and hid themselves from you, you cried out, Adam, where are you? And today, there are people watching on Facebook, there are people on YouTube who are separated from the life of God, and you're calling to them, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? You're telling the Lord to repent, to put their trust in Jesus, your Son, so that they can know the wonderful plan and purpose you have for their lives. Oh, Father, please, may they take a hold of this truth and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For we ask it in his wonderful name.